Hello, hello everyone. Welcome back to the channel. Miss Crochet and Coffee here. And today we're back with something a little bit different. Today, you guys requested it and I went ahead and asked Geneva Bowers if it was okay if I did a flip through of her latest book over on the channel. Now, the reason I asked Geneva, one, is out of pure respect because this is an artist's artwork and I don't know if she wanted the whole world or at least my subscribers to see it or how this was going to go. Before I get started, I will let you know before anybody asks, this book is not available for sale that I know of. Um, to give you a rundown, this book was a Kickstarter that she did. And I wasn't on her Kickstarter, unfortunately. I joined her page right after it closed. And so her Kickstarters got first dibs on the books. And then any books that were left over, she then had up for sale. And they didn't last very long either. So there's no way to purchase this book as of the making of this video. She might release it for sale at some other time. I don't know. But I know I was able to get my hands on it. And you guys had requested that I did a that I do a flip through of it. So we're going to go ahead and do a flip through of it. So I can show you what exactly is in this book. As you guys know, I am a huge Geneva Bauer fan. And she is licensed with Distracted by Diamonds over on Etsy. Now, only a couple of her images are licensed through Distracted by Diamonds. I don't know if Distracted by Diamonds is getting more of her images or what's going on there. All I know is I wanted this book because I love her artwork and the way she, she draws. So uh, I went ahead and got this. And again, like I said, you guys had requested that I do a flip through of it. Now, this book is, it's about a pound. It's a big book. Like, it's a decent sized book. But this isn't just showing off her artwork, and we'll get to that as soon as we get into the book. So let's go ahead and get started. I hope you're all having a wonderful, wonderful day. Here is our intro page. I'm just trying to make sure that, let me get you down enough so that I can make sure you guys can see what I'm seeing. And the book is called Weightless. It says, adjective, having light weight, lacking apparent gravitational pull. The Art of Geneva Bowers. Oh my god, it's so exciting! Now I have had a quick flip through of this book, um, but I haven't really actually looked looked at the pages, so we're going to do that together today. And also, the other reason why I wanted to ask Geneva if it was okay, because a lot of artists have copyrights on their books that specifically state that you cannot legally flip through their book on your channel, especially if you uh, are monetized because they don't like people trying to make money off their stuff. So I wanted to ask, not only out of respect for her, but just to make sure there was any copyright uh, against her book that I won't get in trouble for showing it and not asking her. So I just did the right thing and I asked her before I showed it. So this is just a dedication to her family. And then we have the table of contents. Look how colorful it is. Oh my gosh. And then we have the table of contents over here. It says prelude, drawing methods, showcase, hair method, vignettes and sketches, and questions and answers. So she does answer some questions in the back of the book. And this picture here is called Animal Party. Now I'm not going to be speaking too much to the pictures because obviously I like them all. But uh, yeah. So also, if you would like to pause and read the prelude, um, I'm not going to go into like, you know, all these details and stuff about the preludes and stuff like that. But if you would like to pause and read it, feel free to do so. Make sure, again, making sure y'all can see, making sure you can see. So her drawing method. So she goes into a tutorial on how she gets from step A, which is her sketch, to step D or F or whatever, to the finished product. I love the fact that she added that in the book because uh, she's one of the few artists that I love to follow that doesn't have a YouTube channel that I know of or, or, or a Patreon or anything. So this was one way that I chose to support her on top of, as you guys know, I have the Geneva Bowers wall in my craft room. But uh, I like the fact that she showed her drawing method. I do like her style of drawing with the colorful hair and it's kind of like lineless art, meaning it doesn't have the black outline around it. It's just bunches of colors so I do like the fact that she added her drawing method into the book and then we have blue sky white clouds and again she shows you her drawing methods from start to finish here where where this one is uh essentially it's the girl and then she adds like the rainbow and the clouds and then she adds the last little bits of pieces and then you see the finished product here on this page with the stars in her hair and all her leggings and then you have like the hot air balloons and the streaks of rainbow 
And then you have on air number three, on air number two, which I'm gonna guess the first one was on air number one. On air, oh, nope, I lied. On air number one is this one, which is it says camouflage, which I'm guessing is this one here. I love, love, love that image. I like the fact that she also uses different skin tones in her artwork. It's not just one skin tone. She uses a variety of skin tones. So I love the fact that she's diverse in her artwork as well. So we have this young lady here sitting on the rainbow and her dress and her hair are just kind of like bleeding down to the bottom and it says idling here. Um, then we have this beautiful young lady over here with the rainbows and the clouds and this one says drizzling. I love this artwork. It's so bright and colorful. And then we have these two here. We have the bakery and Vespa. I think that's how you say it, it's Vespa. And I love the little weird animals that she puts in. Like, I don't know where she gets the, like, the inspiration for like the little weird animals, but this is like a duck or a bird or a dog of some sort or a hawk. But I really love the way she does the animals. And then of course you have her leaving, the little girl leaving the bakery here. You have this young lady here on the moped with all her, like, vegetables and stuff. So that's really cool. This one here is Open Road. I also like the fact that she doesn't just do people. She has a plethora of things that she does, meaning landscapes, people, stuff like this, where it's just, it's, there's no people in it. It's just, like it says, it's an open road. And she is constantly drawing. Like, if you check her out over on Facebook, uh... Facebook or Instagram, I guess, because she does get, she is active on Instagram as well. She does put up a lot of her artwork and lets you know when her shop is open to buy stickers, posters, and what have you. So you can buy like artwork from her from a, a multitude of different places. Redbubble, uh, Society Six. Um, she, I, I don't think she has an Etsy. I'm not 100% sure, but I will list a couple of the places you can get her artwork because she also does have a website. Yeah, she has a website, so she doesn't have Etsy. So I will list her website down below so that you guys can go and check out her website. We have Flourish here, and she also draws men. Thank you. So you don't just get women, you also get men as well. Um, even though most of her work, I believe, is women, she does also draw men. So she doesn't exclude the men in her, her artwork. So I like that. And this one here, I actually have this one as a postcard. And this one says, the older I get, the more I realize that birds are the best creatures on the planet, especially chickens. And this one just says train walking. And she has some little chicken, or uh, she has a chicken and some little chicks here with the little girl with the basket full of flowers. Untitled, and this is, then it says gas station for this one here. And this one just says duck. This is a completely adorable because she has like, the girl has a bag full of flowers, and then there's just this little duck with a bell and a bubble. That's <laughs> so cute. This one is called Draped, which I, I think it's like a play off the word grape because it's purple, but it could just mean the draping of the plants around her to make up her hair, but I'm not sure because it looks like the sides of her head is shaved and then the front of it is kind of curled up towards the front of her face. And of course, the little girl has on glasses. This one here, yeah, Spring Yellow is what this one is called. Just gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. I love that. It looks like she has butterfly wings for her glasses. And here we go, Lavender, which is the name of both of these images because they're both sitting in lavender. I love that. Breathe, which she has on the mask. Take a moment to reflect, deep breath, is this one and then this one is called outside her I love I just love the diversity of her artwork and how she does everything and it's not just one thing over and over and over again it's a diversity of men women nature stuff like that plants animals Ooh, I've never seen this one calling up I haven't seen that I've seen this one safari I've seen safari I haven't seen calling up Then we have Moth. I love that she incorporates the pastel rainbow into her artwork. It's just such a vibrant way to do it. It catches your eye every time, no matter what. And then we have Venus, Venus Flytrap. Sorry, I'm getting tongue twisted now. If you see me randomly moving the book, it's because I'm looking to make sure you guys can see it. 
fluttering, which is what this one is called, which is funny because you don't see any like flies or birds or anything fluttering around. It's just her hair. And then you have orange blossom. I love the way her hair uh, goes into the orange at the bottom. She has a very unique art style and I'm here for it, okay? We have Spotlight, which of course we have the shooting star there. Crystal Crown, which is the crystals around her head there. And the hair type, that's the other thing. I love the fact that she changes up the hair type. It's not all long hair, it's not all short hair, it's a little bit of both. She draws all different types of hair types as well. I love that. And then we have bouquets. So we have bouquets here and lit. <laughs> Lit's down here with the glasses on fire. Then we have Element Twin Buns. So we have Element Twins. How awesome is that? Spectrum. So you have like the spectrum of hair here. And then this one is called Polychrome Parade. I love the way she does her curls in her hair, like the Afro curls. Like that is so so pretty i love it and then of course you have the colorful uh whales going through with the hot air balloons i think she really likes hot air balloons because i see, i noticed a lot of her artwork has hot air balloons in it now i have these two i think this one's on my table this one's called raincoat and then jewel tone robe i have this one on my wall as a print this one i believe i have as a sticker and like, I love the fact that the book matches my nails. <laughs> and then this here, you don't find a lot of artists in the diamond painting community as it is. And when I'm, when I'm speaking on this, I'm speaking from the diamond painting community, not so much from uh, just artwork in general, but you don't see a lot of artists, like some artists do, but you don't see a lot of it where they include stuff in the background and it's not just a plain background. So I love the fact that she has like a whole shop here and it's called Emporium. And then this is Facet Night. I have a soft spot for all things fantasy, swords, magic, and the like. It's mostly from a video game, Landon, childhood. Growing up, we didn't have the means to do every, to do very many things outside. So I developed stories and activities based around the types of video games I like to play instead. Dungeons and Dragons, Final Fantasy, and other still heavily influence a lot of my drawings. So there you go. That's where the influence of a lot of her drawings comes from, which is video games that she played as a child. It's great because you actually not only get to see her artwork, but you get to know her through her art and through little snippets like that in the book. So it's it, it was really worth every dime I paid for it. I don't remember what I paid for it, but it was worth it. And this is close for the day. And it says, for this drawing, I wanted to try freehanding everything in, in this case. No straight lines and everything is measured by eye. This decision was inspired by the movie Ponyo. Oh my God, I love the movie Ponyo. Oh my gosh, I've seen that movie and it's so awesome. If you haven't seen it, I don't know what to tell you because I think it was on Netflix for a while and then like they took it off Netflix. But if you can find the movie Ponyo, it's a great movie. Watch it, watch it. Which despite being a beach setting, uses no straight lines in its backgrounds. I never noticed that. You learn something new every day, folks. So this is the start, and then this is the this is the ending piece here. So this is how essentially just step by step how she went about adding everything in. And then of course you have like this little dragon up here. I do hope to see more of her artwork come into diamond painting because it is so diverse which I'm pretty sure is one of the reasons why uh, Robin over at Distracted by Diamonds picked her is because she's probably one of the few artists out there with very diverse artwork and it's very bright and colorful, which is what us diamond painters love. So we have Grim Reaper, Magic Coats, the, what is this, Rap, Rapier, Ruby Mage, which I'm gonna guess this comes from Dungeons and Dragons, possibly that too. And then this is Hermes. It looks like she has on Heelys because it looks like she has roller skates on. She has her headphones, got a little wand here that looks like a snake. She's eating a burger. <laughs> the burger has an onion on it. That's a, you can see, like you can point out all the little details that she, you could tell she takes her time and adds every little detail she can to her pictures. And then we have these two, Warrior and Reaper. 
RPG Gang is a mini series of character designs combining base classes with role playing games with dated streetwear. It's a mixture of almost everything I love aesthetically. I hope to expand this series further. So this is a series that I guess she was working on. Sorcerer and Healer. And I know she was working on a comic book. Um, I'm not sure. I, I think you can go over on her Instagram or her Facebook page to check it out. Like, you'd have to scroll through the post. But she did do, like, a little mini comic book series. And obviously, if you know her artwork from Diamond Painting, you know this one here. This one is called Her Herbal. And then this one is called The Night. So this is actually one of the diamond paintings that is available through Distracted by Diamonds. But again, if you order something from Distracted by Diamonds, you make sure you act quickly because, which I, I did hear that she changed the skin tone on it. Like Robin changed the skin tone so it doesn't come out red anymore. So if you get this kit, I don't believe the skin tone was red because I think it was, uh, I think it was You Can Call Me Butter that, uh, I'm sorry, You Can Call Me Butter. Butter changed the skin tone and everybody like went crazy about it. And so Distracted by Diamonds decided to change the skin color so that it wasn't coming out red because that's one of the major problems when it comes to doing people of color in diamond painting is there's not enough browns to do a lot of the shading so it ends up making the skin tones turn red. And where there are red boned people of color, uh, a lot of people aren't red boned and they don't really want a red character to represent like a black person. So that is one of the reasons why you don't see that that diversity in diamond painting because it takes a little bit extra just to get those skin colors correct so it's not coming out red and it's actually coming out a brown or a chocolate color. Just a little explanation for you there. Zodiac breakfast. So for this video, question of the video, which Zodiac breakfast is you? Are, is you? <laughs> which Zodiac breakfast are you? So it says Zodiac breakfast is delicious all alteration combination of breakfast foods and zodiac signs other than other or other than said alterations there is no particular rhyme or reason as to why the pairings are what they are i basically drew a bunch of foods that are great <laughs> so she just basically drew what she liked gave them a zodiac and put them in the book which is awesome because for the first time ever my zodiac sign does not look all weird i love it i'm like a parfait so hashtag virgo crew um, so we have Aries, Taurus, Gemini, Cancer, Leo, Virgo, Libra, Scorpio, sitting on a, a, a honey bun, <laughs> uh, or a cinnamon roll, Sagittarius, Capricorn, Aquarius, and Pisces. So which breakfast food are you? Write that down in the comment section if you made it this far in the video. And then, oh my God, you guys, look at that. Oh my gosh, the ocean floor. That is just beautiful. The, the use of bright colors to make them look like they're glowing. And this is called Serenade. And over here, she shows you like a step-by-step -step adding all the details until she got to the final image here. And of course, it's a young lady with a golden violin bow uh, serenading the whale. I love that she shows you the process as she does it. All right, and then we have what I like to call her rainbow mermaids. It's hard to believe that there are seven versions of this. It's basically traditional now to draw a new version for mermaid each year, which if you don't know what mermaid is, mermaid is uh, something in the art community. And every May, they usually, they try to do it where every day you draw a different type of mermaid. Um, I was participating this year with Erica the Goober. I had to stop because of something. I don't remember what happened, but I had to stop because of something. But essentially every day in the month of May, you draw a mermaid, a different mermaid, and they give you prompts as to how to draw said mermaid, like food or fruit or animals or, you know, something like that. And so this was her mermaid, mermaids. Uh, each year. Unfortunately, the earliest version are lost to time. I hope people enjoy seeing how this character has evolved and changed throughout time. So Rainbow Fish 5, 6, 
seven, and this is just tell, showing you how she added the details to seven. And then this one is number seven here. This is like the completed version of number seven. This one I have as a poster hanging on the wall right now. I absolutely love it. This one is called Midnight Beach. I love, love, love it. And it's funny because I have this one hanging literally right there on the wall. Like I'm not even joking. It's right there on the wall. And I never even noticed that she had a, a moon on her forehead. <laughs> I didn't even notice it. So this one is one of my absolute favorite ones that she has. I'm hoping that this one becomes a diamond painting. Um, and then we have over here untitled and it just says braids where it looks like she was just practicing her braids. But if you look closely, the braids almost look like fish. So I thought that was really cool. And then you have I C, which is this one here with this kind of reminds me of like Rihanna or something. Like, I don't know why, but it gives it, it's giving me Rihanna vibes right now. And then this one is is titled Beach. So it's just a young lady in a swimsuit. It looks like a surfboard with little fishies hanging off of it. Untitled Study. So this one is a guy, he spots a mermaid, looks like. And then this one is just the, the same scene, but without the, the mermaid and the guy in it. Or maybe that's not a guy, maybe that's a girl, sorry. And then we have this one here called Flower Fields and she has like a little dragon. Love the bright colors. Everything she does is brightly colored or highlighted with bright colors. Dinos, that is completely adorable. I haven't seen this page yet. So we have little dinos and we have like a T-Rex and I don't remember what the name of this dinosaur is, but they have like little balloons untitled collection so none of these have actual names to them so they're just she loves to draw and so she drew i love this one certain times of day evoke a special feeling in me a nostalgia of sorts the golden hour it's a time period that i really love to draw i feel that it's it can be a certain dimension a certain feeling or a particular piece so we have lunchtime and she has like this little bird thing here eating a watermelon while she's eating egg chips. <laughs> and then you have the McDonald's sign, which is called, this one is called Golden Arches. And it took me a few minutes, because I have seen this picture before, but it took me a few minutes to see the angel sitting up here. And you can tell it's an angel because it has a halo. And then there's a little bird up here eating McDonald's with it. Because it has like a little, okay. It has like a little bag of McDonald's with it. So there is that. Ooh, I love this one. The city. So she has a city like on her shirt here. Nice little ringlets of curls. This one is called Flamingo Electronics, which just looks like a little electronic store. So it almost seems as if she gets something in her head that she wants to draw and she just draws it. It doesn't seem like there's rhyme or reason to a lot of it unless like there's a prompt or something for her to do, but she just sits down and just draws. She lets the creativity flow and I love love the fact that she can do that uh this one is called clouds because of course you have the witch here and she's like looks like she's catching stars in her little bag she's sitting on her broom with her witch hat on this one here i actually want to get as a poster for my niece because it looks just like my niece adria and this one is called late summer now my, my niece adria usually typically has braids and she's the niece of mine that we share a birthday um, yeah, I share a birthday with one of my nieces. She's actually my first niece, and we share a birthday. And she always has her hair in braids over the summer, and I think she would really like that image because, like I said, it, it looks a lot like her. So I might have to find this image as a poster and send it to her. Then we have Going Out 1 and 2, which is on this page here. And then Outside In. And she's just sitting here with a little dragon on her dresser. She looks like she's she looks like she's outside, but it also looks like the inside, which is probably why it has the title that it has. Broadcast. So it's just a lady in the field. She has a headset on with a speaker and she has a radio and she's surrounded. It looks like kind of like a junkyard almost, and she's like broadcasting whatever's on the radio. And then we have 
Oriole and Army. So this is Oriole, and then this is Army. Just the use of bright colors is just astonishing. Now, this one. For when all the, the, the stuff was happening this year, uh, she did make a Black Lives Matter piece. And I know it triggers a lot of people when you see Black Lives Matter and it, 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 it causes a lot of whatever, but no matter what anybody says here on my channel, Black Lives Matter, and for those folks that like to come combat me with All Lives Matter, uh, if all lives can't matter until Black Lives Matter. So I love the fact that she did do a piece for Black Lives Matter. Um, I'm actually looking for this piece as a poster to put up in my craft room. So yeah, love this piece. And she signs it right here by the girl's hood. And then we have Leaving. So he's kind of just float, like he has a skateboard, but he's floating away <laughs> with the UFOs. So you got little UFOs up here. This is another one of my favorites, which I have in my room here. Uh, it's actually got foil. I got the one with the, I think that's foil on it. Is that the one with foil on it? Yeah. Okay, sorry, I had to, I, it's up here above my head, and I think it has foil on it, but uh, she has some of her artwork that you can buy with foil in it, so it glimmers and glistens whenever the sun hits it, and it says, using, a, using red in a comforting way has been an interesting challenge. So we have leaving and hanging stars. I love how it just seems like there's no limitations to her artwork. Just She just draws what she loves and enjoys doing it. So I love it. Uh, this one is called Night Lights. Healing a Broken Heart is this one here. Now this one. Look, listen. Another big poster I have up on my wall over there. I love this one. It's called Citrus. And of course, it's probably called that because of the color, the use of color in this image. So I stop moving it around. <laughs> I have this one as well. A small take on one of my favorite works of art, one of the best artists to have ever lived, in my opinion, Starry Night. And then we have Stella on this side. And then we have this one here, which is called Voyage. And it says, this was inspired by a line of Fox space colonization and exploration posters by NASA. Uh, the idea of space exploration is just so incredible. So it's just a girl going into space. And then of course she has jellyfish around her. So how cool is that? I have this one on my wall now. Uh, Numbra, I wanna say it's called kind of like nebula almost, but numbra or penubra. And then we have gra gravitational pull as this young lady on this side. This one I have on my wall, I know I have it and gold foil is right over there on the wall actually. It's called Sparks. Reminds me of Jordan Sparks, the singer. I wonder if that's what it's inspired by. And this one is called Dirigible, Dirigibles. Sorry, I couldn't get that out. <laughs> so it looks like they're, uh, they're not hot air balloons. What are they, blimps, I wanna say? Maybe they're blimps, I think that's what they're called. Airships. What? Airships. Mr. Coffee says airships. <laughs> well, come here and look at this real quick. Hold on, we're gonna get Mr. Coffee's opinion. He wanna put his little two cents in, now he's gotta be in the video. All right, these. They're not blimps? Airships. They're airships? If it's based on like Final Fantasy and D&D &D stuff and the theology of it, then yeah, airships. Okay, Mr. Coffee says they're airships. We're gonna go with airships. Remembering to stay hydrated. So she has the girl with the little uh, flower and her tea. We have this chick here that's sitting in a, uh, looks like succulent soda. Okay, there you go. So it's succulents and soda. This one's called cacti tea. Sips, 
and then it has in parentheses, it says Galaxy. And I have this one up on the wall right here is Coffee Goddess. Of course, Miss Coffee had to have that one. I think it's, I also have the sticker of that on my table. I also have this one as a poster sitting right behind me. This is called Bubble Tea. I bought a lot of these images uh, for Minna for the, the guest room upstairs. And I just ended up <laughs> putting them on the wall down here in my craft room because I wanted to have a wall of just artwork and not just diamond paintings back here. So I love how she gives you the rundown. I want to I wanna try to see if I can draw this in my style. So because she has the sketch here and as long as I have the sketch, I can try to draw this in my style. So I might try that. We'll have to wait and see. What do you guys think? You think I should be able to maybe possibly try this in my style? I'm not sure if I can do the color watercolor thing because she's the queen of watercolor looks, but I can probably try to draw this in my style. That would be a cool video. Painting clouds, which is this young lady here when she's painting clouds on her cheeks. She just uses like, okay, for those folks that are in the group Crafters Anonymous with Miss Crochet and Coffee and Rachel Ray, um, uh, James Clevenger, the, the, our, our pen turner in the group. He's the only person I allow to turn pens and sell them in the group. Uh, he mentioned that I gave him colors for a diamond painting pen which, uh, let me see if I can find the pen. Okay, so I had to get it off the shelf here next to me. So this is the pen that James made for me, and he said I gave him a couple of colors. I actually gave him colors based on this picture because I wanted it to match this picture. So I gave him teal and pink and yellow, and this is what he came up with, and I think it's absolutely gorgeous, and it even has some of the, like, the lime green kind of yellow in there as well. So he did a great job but I'm not even joking you, this picture sits right behind me and when he asked me for colors, I went towards that picture because I was like, I want, a, I want a pen that kind of has the same colors as this because I've never seen a pen like that before and this is what he created. So he did an amazing job. So thank you, James. All right, hold up, can you, okay, you can see it now. So we're gonna put this back on my little shelf over here so I don't lose it. Let's keep going. All right, and then we have this one here, which is called The Gardener. Despite my work being overall bright and sunny, I am actually quite a horror buff. Really? I especially fond of scenes that look like, that look overall fine, but have an unsettling, an unsettling element or two in the background. So as you can see, she gives you the rundown of how she came up with this image. And then for the final image here, you can see the eyes in the background behind the gardener. I would never have guessed that she was a horror buff though, because of course, like she said, bright colors. Most horror buffs aren't thinking of bright colors, so that's really, really cool. Spotted. You got a little alien. <laughs> She's delivering a pizza. It's always the pizza delivery people, those poor people. And then this one is called Ghost Stick because it has like the little ghost. I love, I love the fact that she does backgrounds. I'm still learning how to draw in general, but I'm getting down like people. And I struggle with trying to figure out what to put in the background of my stuff. So I love the fact she does backgrounds. Star Bride and then Cinderella. Willow. I love that she gives you the sketches because it gives me so like even me as a beginning artist like it's a newbie it gives me so many ideas of things that I can draw just based off like using that just that one picture as a reference. It gives me so many ideas of things that I can draw in my style. Now when you draw something in your style that doesn't mean you copy what somebody else does. It means you draw it how you draw things not how they draw things. So like I have a I have a very kind of not I wouldn't say anime I very bubble style so everything's in chunks and bubbles so uh it gives me ideas of ways that I can interpret that into a style painting or a picture that I can draw because again I'm new I could never draw all that <laughs> then we have Helion and Nyx I want to say it's Nyx NYX
Then this here we have colors, which I love her colorful braids, obviously, because Miss Color Miss Coffee loves colors. And we have hazel. And as you can see, this book has so many images in it. It's it's ridiculous. Egg Galaxy and Carbs. <laughs> I like that she called it carbs. <laughs> and then this one, of course, is Egg Galaxy. Sending love wherever you are. This one is obviously called Sending Love. Coily Hair Method. Thank you. I love the fact that she adds this in her book for people like me and a lot of artists that follow her that love to know how she does the coily hair when she does it. This gives you a rundown exactly of how she does it step by step. So I love the fact that she does that. Like she does like the watercolor first and then she adds in the ringlets and stuff to make the soft brush for blocking colors, texture brush for strands. I love that. So she just breaks it down for you. Vignettes, so these are just vignettes of different drawings. Ooh, I love that one. That one's my favorite, and that one, and that one. <laughs> I love this one too. I love her little camo pants. And she does different body types, so there, there's no limit to her drawing. It's She's wide open and she draws everything. This one is sketches, so this is just a couple of different sketches. Ooh, I love that one. Bunch of fire sketches and stuff on here. I'm not sure where she was going with that one, but I can kind of see something coming out of it. Uh, looks like just like a rough draft sketch. She has like this pirate kitten right here, and then looks like a a Joker character here. I love this one with the star, and it looks like it's in a flame or a bubble of some sort. You have good versus evil. You have this young lady down here with a dragon. And then it says questions and answers. So she has answered a couple of questions. So do you have comfort foods that you like drawing? Have you drawn them? Foods are big for me. Well, technically they're important to everyone, but drawing them as a theme is fun. I enjoy drawing drinks and people enjoy drawing, enjoying drinks, especially it might be because I overuse coffee and tea to grind through the day as well as chill time. Sweets are overall fun to draw because of the different textures. Um, let's see, let's find another one. I don't want to read all of them. You can always pause to read if you want to read all of them. It says, do you listen to music while you create? If so, what kind? Almost always. I collect soundtracks from video games and listen through while drawing most of the time. There's several hours long, which makes it easy to time how long a certain drawing takes. And we have another couple of questions on this side. Let's see, we'll, we'll pick this one. What is your favorite part of the process of creating a new piece? Favorite parts would have to be throwing in colors behind a sketch just before rendering. The act of putting in small details after rendering. I don't enjoy sketching at all that much and blending rendering is where I usually want to work, want to quit working on something as it can be a long and half finished, the, and the half finished look looks a little wonky until it doesn't anymore. And then she has some final thoughts. Again, if you want to read all of this, feel free, pause, read, do what you got to do. I'll bring it down a little bit so it might be a little bit easier for you to read. And then it says final thoughts. This, the art in this book is from 2020. A lot of it was drawn with the intention of bringing comfort both for myself and others. Going forward, I like to refine my art even more with a focus on expressing emotion and continued representation. Thank you for being on this journey with me. Until next time, stay sweet. And it just says thank you at the end. And that is the last page of the book. Thank you for taking this journey with me. This book is 136 pages long. And then that's the final page there before you get to the back. And then of course it has the www.genevab.com website at the back, which I of course will have down below so that you can click it easily and get to the website. But this book is just it's incredible it's incredible to see all her artwork to see it grow to see how she does her process and everything else it's great for inspiration for if you have like drawers block or something like that even for us diamond painters it's great for 
figuring out which images we think might look good as a diamond painting and maybe possibly asking distracted by diamonds if she's willing to do this particular because geneva is obviously you know signed with her so we would have to ask geneva bowers if she'd be willing to bring some of these artworks to life in diamond painting if she thinks that they'll look good in diamond painting because not all pictures will look good in diamond painting but with that said folks i hope you enjoyed this book i know i did i loved going through all the colorful pages and seeing what she's been up to and i can't wait to see if she does this again next year and of course if she does you guys know i will bring you the book and as long as she okays it i will show it to you again if she decides to do a volume two so with that said folks i gotta get out of here thank you so much for watching if you have any questions comments concerns leave those down in the comment section below and i'll try my best to answer them if you're new to the channel and would like to see more random crazy videos just like this please feel free to hit the subscribe button and the bell to be notified anytime i randomly decide to put up a video and believe me it's random but with that said i must now bid you adieu but not before I'm reminding you that it's hard out here in these crafty streets so please remember to stay safe wear your mask wash your hands don't touch your face keep your six feet and always try be kind be courteous be cool Bye, guys.